You come back to me. I put you back in the kitchen, wash dishes to pay back loan. By that time, you're no longer young, you're no longer handsome, you're nothing but a dish washer. It's still a long way off for Asian American actors because they're not getting the roles written for you. And you, you really have to have good roles in order to sustain a career. You know, you, you could do like one movie and uh, be very successful, but in order to continue your career, you need more roles to keep your career going. And unfortunately, for Asian American actors, we feel that we're still a long way off from getting good media roles in order to do that. And I think even more so for Asian American actors than actresses. Why? Because they, they seem to write or more things happen for, you know, maybe a relationship would be a Western man with a Chinese girl, Asian woman. Very seldom the other way around. In America, now I'm talking about here, I mean, they write for their own people. In Hong Kong, you have the Chinese actors. They're written for them. The roles are written for them. They don't have, to, they don't have that problem. But in America, we're still, it's a minority. Oh, we, we kind of try to encourage like, Asian Americans to go behind the camera, too. We need better writers, producers, directors, uh, executive producers, in order to get roles, uh, finance the pictures for Asian Americans. They are doing that. I mean, once in a while, more independent. But you know, the independent film industry in, in America or elsewhere is not doing very well either because either today is a big studio film with just as much money for the budget of the picture as advertising to push it through. Independent film, unless it's a um, breakthrough in maybe the um, film festivals, artistically got great reviews, then they might have a chance in the theater. Um, originally, since I was very young, I wanted to be a ballet dancer. I always wanted to be a ballet dancer. And actually, I went to London and I um, auditioned for the Royal Ballet when I was 12 already. But I had to finish my education. My father said, now you finish your education first. And then I went back to the Royal Ballet School. I fell into acting. I, um, Accident. Well, I was home for the holidays, and I went to the studio to see, to see um, my favorite actresses. They were here. They were there testing for the role of the world of Susie Wong. I just happened to be there. And in life, is always timing. You know, I guess when it's the right time, the right place, things happen. And if it's not right timing, it can never happen, or may never happen. And so it was timing for me. And then they asked me if I wanted to come to America to study acting. I was given a contract. Uh, I was very adventurous, adventurous when I was young, so I said, sure, why not? Oh, I remember Hong Kong being a beautiful, beautiful, laid-back seaport with a beautiful ocean, great skyline. Food was good. Um, you know, when you're a childhood, you have certain uh, memories, childhood memories that stays with you. Uh, that was food, of course the family. I went to a terrific school. Uh, oh, I remember the nun, the teachers, they were nuns. It was, it was a convent, my whole convent school. And as a, as a, first it's a beautiful school to look at. You seen it? It's in Kowloon Tong, right? And the nuns were very, I thought they were very kind-hearted, very nice. I mean, and I had a favorite nun there. My, my, my teacher, you know, my uh, class teacher, Ooh. Sister Matthew Marie, that was her name. And, uh, oh, boy, I, I, was, uh, I was one of her favorites, so it was good. I used to get cookies and milk and all that stuff. When the refugees first came into Hong Kong, you know, from China, and it, before Hong Kong was, before that it was a, you know, quiet seaport. And then the refugees came in, bringing the trades from all over China, right? And they settled here. And they really built, they were the ones that built up Hong Kong because they brought their own industry, they brought their own careers, the, the, the crafts, whatever. And, yeah, and I was a little girl then. I used to go and play with friends, and we would meet the kids living in cardboard boxes in the squatters, and we'd play with them. You know, I would give them uh, 
steal cigarettes, you know, from home and give it to them, the, the, to the parents, not to them, to the parents. Give them comic books to read. And I just wrote about that. And they barter for things. And, I mean, it was a survival time for them. So so when you're a child, you know, you don't see that you, you just like the person you play with them. I don't care where they come from. Hong Kong is a place that changes for me faster than any city in the world. I mean, I look out the skyline in the morning across the harbor and I go, I don't know, what, what city am I in? I mean, what, what city is this? It's certainly not Hong Kong. I mean, it changes constantly. I was in Jin Sajou. Now, I know Jin Sajou very well. Well, I got lost there. You know. Yes, I was looking for Moody Road. It's a street that I've known since childhood. I could not find it. 